of pilots. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And today I'm going to talk about five seemingly simple things that, that Marvel, DC, you know, the comic industry could change today if they wanted to. That would really help uh, comic books, the industry, uh, get kind of healthy again and, and move forward. And then I'm going to explain to you why they absolutely can't have it. In many ways, the comic industry has almost backed itself into a corner uh, to where they can't make a lot of changes that, that would be helpful at this point because they've uh, they've done so many things with short-term goals in mind, only thinking in the short-term, no, no, no longer thinking about long-term long -term health of the industry, that they've, they've made a lot of, uh, of, of bad decisions that essentially most of them can't be undone. Now, what I what I say, lay these out, and you're going to be like, "What? What about politics and comics? That one's not so simple, and that, that one, you know, uh, that's a bigger problem than just the comic books themselves. What we're going to be talking about are the comic books, and the, you know, the the product themselves, and then how they could be fixed. Like I said, it's going to they're going to seem real simple, and then I'm going to explain why maybe it's not so simple, and, and basically it can't be undone. Number one, comic books are too expensive way too expensive they're you know the cost of a normal issue right now is four dollars a lot of comics or five dollars and we're seeing that big number one uh debuts or uh, comic books that are for hot storylines are up to six dollars and these aren't dc black label or some special anthology these are normal comic books back in the day when you go to your grocery store, you go to the pharmacy, wherever, they had the spinner rack and you get the your comic book. As you grabbed a candy bar or a packet of bubble gum or maybe a pack of baseball cards on your way out the, the grocery store aisle or wherever, you know, your impulse buy. They were all essentially the same price. Like a, a candy bar is 50 cents. A pack of baseball cards is 50 cents. A new comic book was 50 cents. And a lot of people long for the days of us to go back to that. It's not happening because the, the prices, basically comic books have priced themselves out of those aisles, out of those sections. There's, they're no longer impulse buys. Even, you know, you say, well, candy bar is a lot more expensive than it was back then. Yes, but, you know, comic books are in a lot of cases twice as expensive as a candy bar on the way out now. That's why it's no longer there. Same thing happened with baseball cards. It all happened because of the 90s boom. They decided that they didn't need those impulse buys. They didn't need that entry point that they were going to become like a specialty retail like kind of a product that was going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. They didn't realize that once people figured out that there are only so many action comics number ones that you can get your hands on or find that are actually sending your kids to college that most of the the new comics that they were buying during the during the uh, bubble were going to end up essentially being worthless at least not worth very much for a very very long time because they're over overprinted uh, they, they did all kinds of gimmicks which we're doing to this day which i'm going to talk about to uh, make them rare and people kind of abandoned the product and all of a sudden you've, you've priced yourself out of a certain market and now you're you're stuck in a lurch. We've been here for uh, 20, 30 years, something like that, 25, something like that. And that's why they, they can't go back. Now, there are some certain comics that are a good, good value still. The, the average price of a candy bar is $2.25. Now, you're not going to find a lot of comics that are at that price or lower. But Spawn is $3. That's pretty darn close. If you go over there to uh, Alterna Comics, although they aren't uh, distributed by Diamond anymore, you can still find them in some comic shops. I believe theirs are $2 now, maybe a little bit cheaper in some cases. So there are certain certain comics that are competitive in that, that space, but for the most part, they're, they're far too expensive. We know that DC Comics only, was it four or five years ago, were, were holding the line at two ninety nine, dollars right? After they had already priced themselves up to four dollars, they came back down, realized that the price was too expensive, tried to do a market correction during uh, during rebirth, but they've quickly abandoned that, and they're they're they've started escalating their prices faster than Marvel, which is definitely strange if you look at the history of comic books and the 
increases in price. Normally, it's Marvel that sets the price increases, and D- DC reluctantly catches up. You know, uh, twelve to eighteen months later, now they're actually kind of setting <laughs> they're setting the standard at DC Comics. They've chased so many people away by making things so expensive that they have to keep the prices this at where they are. If they were to drop the prices back down to three or two ninety nine and try and be competitive in that space and make comic books an impulse buy once again, they would lose a lot of money. Marvel and DC on the comics just because of the contracts that they have, the amount of customers that are left that are coming in buying comic books. It would take a long time. It would take marketing effort to let people know that comic books are once again affordable, you know, to, to buy for your kids again. So they can't do it unless they, they were willing to eat losses for a couple of years at least. We see what's happening in Disney. We see what's happening at and They're getting rid of Warner Media. It's getting, you know, sucked in with the discovery. Now is not the time to do a, do a price decrease. But we're probably never going to see a time to do a price decrease. And we know that there's a paper shortage right now, and paper costs have gone up uh, substantially. There's a lot of shipping issues uh, all over the world because of what's going on with COVID. So pr- paper costs have gone up, and you can just expect to see comic prices to continue to increase, unfortunately. That one ain't changing, unfortunately. they the comic readership is is dwindled to such a degree that they can't uh, decrease prices without losing money and you know affecting the bottom line the next one that uh, most people would say well you could do this one this will be easy and we did see them do this recently i'll, I'll be completely uh, honest about it but it wasn't because this is what marvel or dc or image comics wanted to do they don't need to put out so many comic books every single month you know, there, there, there is a, you know, the law of diminishing returns where you could have too many Marvel comics on the shelf to where, you know, even the diehard Marvel fans that want to buy every one of them can't afford it or don't have the time to read that many comics. DC Comics somehow is, is matching Marvel right now as far as output. That's crazy. And we've seen images output recently start uh, skyrocketing again. Now, recently, DC and, and Image did cut back on their production, the, the amount of new comics they were putting out. And then when the the uh, pandemic happened, obviously things, things, things shut down. Marvel started releasing every other week, and then between that, it would be graphic novels. Uh, and, you know, they scaled down the line. They were comic books that had been announced that we didn't see for 18 months. But they're getting right back to where they were. Why do they flood the shelves? It seems like it would be much healthier and it would increase sales of a lot of their, their middling titles if they cut down some of the bottom stuff and people say, well, okay, I'm not going to buy those five comics that weren't selling all that well to begin with. I have a little bit more money. Let me go to some of these uh, other titles that maybe aren't selling quite as well. An Iron Man, a Fantastic Four, go over to DC Comics, maybe a Nightwing or a Flash that are doing okay. They're doing pretty well, but they're not doing Batman numbers, not doing Spider-Man numbers. This would, in theory, increase those numbers. But what it also do, it would increase the sales numbers for Image, Boom, IDW. And in Image cases, Image's case, and you look at Boom with their growth, you'd almost see them. If, if Marvel and DC weren't flooding the shelves, and here's the thing, when you have a Marvel label or that logo or a DC logo on your comic book, it's going to get ordered, and it's going to get put on the shelf of stock, right? Even if it doesn't sell because it's a Marvel and a DC comic, you're in a comic book shop, people expect to see those. Well, the more Marvel and DC stock that you have in your new comic book display, right, for your, for your new comic books, that's less slots for Image, Boom, IDW, Dark Horse, some of the up-and-comers like Vault that I think are doing fantastic. There's no way that DC or Marvel can feel comfortable with their market share right now to to offer the opportunity to for these indies to kind of grow. People are already kind of walking away a bit from Marvel and DC. We've seen uh, the rise in sales in a lot of these books. Image was kind of screwed not that long ago. They stopped The Walking Dead before that saga had went on a supposed 
12 to 18 month hiatus. It's still on hiatus well after 24 months. When Saga coming back, I don't know. And their best selling title was essentially Spawn, which had had like a rebirth of sorts where the it would stuck down at about 12,000 sales over the course of about a year. It jumped up to about 30 once they dropped the price actually to three nine or two ninety nine, and it was stuck at thirty. That was like the best selling image comic, like ongoing. Now it spawns up there more like around sixty, <laughs> and there are a bunch of really hot image titles right now that are selling fantastic. And a lot of the new image number ones, they sell a lot of comic books, especially they have a big name on them like a James Tynan and a Scott Snyder, uh, even in like an Al Ewing. And then we see like boom with what they've done with uh, Keanu Reeves and some of their big titles. They're having a lot of, they're all kind of setting records as far as initial uh, printings for a lot of their new comic books. There's no way DC comics and Marvel right now in their minds can afford their market share to shrink their output and allow more opportunities for people to stop looking at Spider-Man, stop looking at Batman and maybe go look at Noctera. Maybe go look at, berserker or eve or another one of these comic books that's why they're not going to stop putting so many comic books out they're flooding the shelves so there's less room on the shelf for indie titles right that's why they're doing it there's no way that they're going to um they're going to chance their market share there you would think it would be good for dc and marvel for some of these titles to get big maybe produce new talent thing come over to marvel and dc that ain't happening which will kind of uh, come into the, no, the number five reason as well the third thing that you would think that they would want to do or they could do, but they absolutely won't do, that would be really easy, is all the variant covers. There are so many variant covers, and mostly in the past, it's been Marvel. Marvel would be like, every month there's a special variant initiative. It's the 12th anniversary of Spider-Gwen. Let's do a special variant for half the line. It's the... You know, we've got the upcoming Empire event. We're going to have a special variant for half the comic books that don't even tie into Empire to per, to get people excited. And they would have all these stupid variants and they have lots of schemes, right? If you want to get this special uh, variant cover of Amazing Spider-Man, you actually also have to order this many, you know, what this percentage, and it's only like 120%, 150% of your normal order of, Immortal Hulk or your normal order of Venom. They didn't have to do it with Venom because uh, Donny Cates had it hot. But that's the way they did have all these incentives out there. And Marvel, for the most part, still do, does those. I don't believe DC is doing those as much, but I know that they're doing them more. DC used to just do your A cover and then you had your B cover, which was more of a like an artistic cover. But even DC, like you saw the, um, what was it? The Three Jokers. I think there was nine variant covers for every issue. That's not very DC like. And for every like new, all the big new titles coming out, DC is putting a lot of variant covers. They're doing a lot of um, a lot of special variants coming out of DC. Certainly out of Marvel, we still see that. You know, what was <laughs> forty two variant covers for Turtles? Get out of here. We're seeing it a lot with Image. Image didn't do it very much anymore. Uh, Image hadn't been doing it very much. It was very successful for the Spawn 300 uh, issue. We just saw it with King Spawn number one. You know, they had the special uh, CGC, you know, uh, signed copies from from um, from Todd McFarlane that were witnessed and, you know, had the serial number and everything. Those blew through, uh, blew their orders through the roof. You know, there was the one and 250. There are stores buying 750 copies so they could get three of them. They almost have to do these now, right? Because they can charge so much more for a special incentive cover. The one in 250s, a one in 500, you know, even a one in 100. So they end up ordering more copies of comics than they can sell in the moment. Hopefully they can, you know, they can offload them as uh, back issues later, maybe go in the dollar bin, you know, and recoup some more costs, make, maybe make a little money down the line. But it's, um, there's so many speculators out there and there's so many people they aren't even reading the comics anymore. They're buying them for the variant covers, specifically the limited edition variant covers, so they can have them graded. 
and then you know essentially never read them part of make them part of their collection there's nothing wrong with that you know hey wes what do you got you got a problem with speculators well to a degree i have a problem with speculators but hey if you want to buy comic books and you want to spend your own money do it how you want to do it if that is not my money those are your purchases but dc and marvel and even image are, are taking a advantage of this this part of the market and they're not going to stop until the bubble bursts and i do think there is a slight bubble coming or we're, we're in a bit of a bowl it's different than the 90s we're not going to have a catastrophe like that because the industry is so much smaller now we don't have ten thousand comic shops you know to to um to lose you know six thousand of them you know essentially in 12 months or whatever it was some astronomical, not astronomical number. I don't know that, that that's probably not the exact number, but you get what I'm saying. But that's why they're doing it. They can do all these extended covers. They can tie them in together and prop up the sales on the, on the titles that aren't even associated. That's why we get all these uh, number one reboots and everything too, because then you you got to do more incentive covers, got to do more variants, pop a big number and stuff like that. Those those just aren't going away because. That's how DC and Marvel are keeping their bottom line looking okay. And, you know, to the to the corporate big wigs in, in the accounting offices, it looks like things are normal or maybe even getting better. When, in fact, uh, the, the actual readership is, is declining as they're looking for options in other places. Specifically, it looks like manga is, is continuing to heat up. They're going to have another record-breaking year despite having massive uh, supply shortages in America this year. We see people are, um, you know, jumping on a lot of these uh, these independent titles. And hey, look at what Boom did with, with Berserker. Those signed, what, what were those one in one thousand Keanu Reeves comics? You know, hey, they sold six hundred fifty thousand comics. Who's not going to do that when you have an opportunity to? Right? The variant covers aren't going anywhere. Uh, the number four thing that you would think would be easy for them to uh, to get away with, but they absolutely have to, is too many events. I think almost everybody can agree there are too many events, specifically at Marvel. We see DC is becoming much more event and crossover reliant. This is mostly a DC uh, Marvel thing. It's not really an indie thing. But we're certainly seeing events, you know, through Dynam Dynamite and, uh, and some of the other publishers that have, like, kind of shared universes. People still have a, a fondness for events and the idea of change. And a lot of times that's when an event is selling. The idea that things are going to change. If you're not happy with your Fantastic Four, we got a Fantastic Four event. On the flip side, that version of Fantastic Four, whatever the outcome is, is going to be more suitable to you. It's time to dump, dive in to Fantastic Four because, you know, finally it's going to get back to where you, you were hoping it was. You're a big X-Men fan. You don't like exactly what we're doing in Krakoa. We've got Ten of Swords on the flip side on this big crossover event. We're going to change everything. And all the things that you didn't like somehow are magically going to disappear. So there's a hope factor with readers. We know we got Fear State for Batman. That'll be like the, the second event in the last 15 months. Maybe even less than that. The second Batman event. We had, um, you know, we had uh, Joker War. Now we've got, we've got Fear State. And we know there's going to be a big status quo change. If you're not liking James Tynan's uh, stat uh, Batman, at the end, he's not going to be the writer. Batman's going to leave, and we're going to do a big status quo, quo change. Hopefully, it'll be more to your suiting. And, and people, they want to buy Batman. They want to buy X-Men. They want to buy Spider-Man. They want to buy uh, Fantastic Four if they've fallen off. They don't want to miss the big event that sets up the Fantastic Four or whatever that, that they wanted. So there's a FOMO element to it that so drives up sales. But also, when you do these things, you can do all these like little one shots and teasers and tie ins that we saw with Death Metal or whatever. What happens when you get a number one issue? You, you know, you get speculators come in, drive up sales, but you also get to do a lot more variant covers. Completely tied into too many variant covers. You, you're not going to see less events because of that, because they do spike numbers. And also, because once, you know, there used to be like at Marvel, a summer event, and then there was a smaller winter event. And that's what they did annually. And then, you know, all of a sudden, if you see the numbers were going down, well, what can we do to get the numbers back up? Well, let's do a second summer event or maybe uh, a spring event. Okay, the numbers went up. And now you've got so many events out there. They're, they're almost monthly. Some months you'll have three events overlapping. 
because it bumps the numbers up and they have to maintain at least the previous, you know, two or three years sales numbers. So it doesn't look like they decreased their audience. You're never going to see a decrease in events. They're completely reliant to maintain the sales numbers and the figures that, that make it look like what they're doing is, is effective. Also, when you get these events, you know, when you do your whatever alpha issue, you can sell for six bucks. When you do, uh, you know, your, your stupid, uh, tie your your lead up for your Marvel events, or you do the anthology tie in. You can charge eight dollars, and you get a, you get to spike the prices. You get a lot more variant covers, and you get the speculators come in because something's going to happen. It's a vet, something permanent's going to happen, and uh, you know. So you get the combination of the variant covers. You get the you get some number one issues, but you get the FOMO, and people hope it, just hoping that they they're finally going to get the change that they want. Events aren't going away. They're far too reliant on them. And you can see DC becoming more reliant on events as time goes on. And you look at DC, they're becoming far more like Marvel as time goes on, not just in some of the things that you're seeing in the in the comics themselves, mir mirroring what Marvel has done in the past and all new, all different Marvel Now legacy, but with the variant cover schemes, with the event cycles and, and things like this. Now, the last one is repetitive storylines. If you go and you read a lot of um, Nick Spencer's Spider-Man, which I like, a lot of it are repeats of kind of stories that you've liked in the in the past. Like um, you know, Spider-Man Hunted isn't exactly Craven's Last Hunt, but it certainly borrows some elements, and it was selling on that nostalgia. If you look at Jason Aaron's uh, you know Avengers run, which ran out of steam very fast. You know, we, we got the Dark Phoenix, you know, kind of stuff going in there. We've got, uh, you know, Moon Knight, uh, whatever thing, the thing that just happened recently. We've got uh, World War Hulk going on in there. You go over to Batman. We've got, you know, uh, what is it? We had uh, City of Bane, and then we had Joker War, which is another villain taking over the city. And now we've got fear state which is another set of villains taking over gotham it's essentially the same storyline three times within 24 months maybe maybe 27 something like that we've we've been given the same story arc over and over and over for nostalgia sake because it's it's uh, it's a proven money maker right every single year over at marvel you get an infinity stone story uh, you know Basically, after Infinity Gauntlet, this year we got uh, you know Infinite Destinies, where the the stones are sentient, and they keep rehashing and regurgitating the same story arcs over and over and over. We're going to be getting a Secret War suit, right? And why is that? Well, first of all, it's nostalgia. It's something that people already feel comfortable with and already associate a good feeling with. Hey, uh, why don't I go pick up Inferno? That was a really good event back in the day. Now I do recommend it because of Jonathan Hickman. But um, you know, there's a reason that they're reusing these these uh, these these ideas, even the bad ones. We we just had a Miles Morales Clone War. We just had a Heroes Reborn, not exactly well thought of, but it is a name. It's an it's a name that Marvel has traded on and sold in the past, so they keep reusing them. Another reason we're getting a lot of familiar elements within a lot of the main characters, like um, a lot of James Tynan's Batman. He created a lot of characters, but they're they're not clones of what came before but they're very similar to characters in the past Ghostmaker it's pretty similar to hush batman's best friend when he was a kid now he's you know he's come back to cause him some pain you look at the gardener kind of similar uh similar ideas behind uh, poison ivy you look at punchline kind of similar to harley quid you know and, and the list goes on you can you can find all these things that they're they're very similar in nature uh, there have been a couple of, of what I would call uh, original ideas, the um, the Underbroker and uh, Miracle Molly, Mighty Molly, whatever her name is. Is it Magic Molly? Maybe it's Magic Molly. Whatever that stupid character name is, those are kind of original ideas. The, the Magic Molly thing kind of fits in with the cyberpunk aesthetic that they were building towards Gotham. But why would James Tynan go out there and create his best storylines or his best characters and give them to DC essentially for nothing? At this point, the creators themselves have had to realize 
no matter how wonderful your story arc that you create, no matter how wonderful the original character that you create, you know, they're all going to be considered derivative anyway. And you're never going to get pop properly compensated for them. Why would you give your best ideas to DC or Marvel? You're getting, you know, paid for a Batman story. Re regurgitate a Batman story from 15 years ago that was already successful. Just, to, you know, change the villain. If, you know, why would Jason Aaron go and give Marvel the best, you know, stuff that he's got? When he can just go like, oh, yeah, let's do a Phoenix Force tournament. Let's do World War She-Hulk. <laughs> They've only done three of these already. You know, uh, and that's one of the reasons. One, nostalgia works. And number two, these creators aren't art. They've realized that giving away your best stuff, your best material, being creative for DC and Marvel is not in their best interest because they're never going to be think properly for it. And that's why we're getting all these repetitive storylines, regurgitation, rehashing the names. And, uh, you know, and that's the way it is. It's like a cycle. And we've got that in, uh, in other mediums, too. But it's just uh, it, it's too bad. It's really holding comic books back. You know, you don't get a lot of, um, of original ideas. And if you do get original ideas, it feels like they kind of just fall by the wayside and get get uh, stuck in whatever the big upcoming event is, just kind of kills off the momentum and everything. So it's too bad. So those are five five things that you know we could all go. Well, that would be an easy fix. It would be an easy fix, but there's a reason why they're not going to happen, especially at Marvel and DC. They're not decreasing the prices. They're not going to decrease the about the output. They're not going to stop making too many variant covers. They're not going to stop with the events. There's probably going to be more of all of this in the future, and they're not going to stop regurgitating you know uh, uh, storylines, event names, and stuff like that. Because it's not in the best interest of the creators and nostalgia sells. And there you go. What do you think is something else that needs to be changed that would be very effectively easy? And if you have an idea of why it wouldn't happen, let us know that in the comment section. Those are my thoughts. Have a good day.